Welcome to MEC 346, an introductory course in heat transfer. This course will primarily be concerned about conservation of energy, and in particular with the transport of energy in the form of heat. Before I get into the details, I'd like to put it in the context of the thermal fluid sciences. By now, you've taken courses in fluid mechanics and courses in thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is concerned with the differences between states. It enables us to calculate the work required or the energy transport required to go from one state to another. Fluid mechanics, we can calculate the pressure drops in pipes, size pipes, figure out the drag forces on immersed objects, and various things like this. Let's think about an example that involves all three of these things and it will require an understanding of heat transfer. Think about the vapor compression refrigerator that you studied in thermodynamics and that you use on a daily basis. In a vapor compression refrigerator, we start with a superheated refrigerant and we compress it with the compressor, which is normally located at the bottom of the refrigerator. Compress it to a higher pressure and a higher temperature. And then we take that compressed fluid and we condense it into a liquid through the condenser. Condenser is where the heat is rejected to the room. And that's usually located on the back of the refrigerator. And of course, if you go to your refrigerator, you'll see that it's, there's warm air behind there where the energy from the fridge is being dumped uh, behind the refrigerator. At this point, the energy, the fluid is passed through an expansion valve or a capillary tube in order to drop the pressure significantly, at which point it then passes through the evaporator where it's gathering heat from the inside of the refrigerator and going back to state one to return the cycle. Thermodynamics enables you to calculate the, max, the, the, the minimum amount of energy that you have to put into that system in order to affect the desired heat transfer rate. Fluid mechanics enables you to design some of the piping systems in there and understand the pressure drops that are going to be experienced going through that system. Those pressure drops result in differences from the ideal thermodynamic cycle shown. Of course, we'll see pressure drops in the pipes and that's going to change where we are on these state diagrams. In addition, the compression process isn't going to be 100% efficient. And if we have heat transfer in that compression process, there's going to be an entropy change and will depart from some of the more ideal processes we'd like to see. Heat transfer is required in order to size the condenser and evaporator. Once we know the fluid flow, the rates of fluid flow going through these systems and the temperatures which we require on either side of them, we need to use heat transfer in order to calculate how much surface area is required in order to affect these changes. You'll notice on this condenser on the back of the refrigerator here, there are tubes where the refrigerant is circulated and a bunch of metal wires connecting those to add extra surface area in order to enhance the heat transfer from the refrigerator. So we need all of the three thermal fluid sciences in order to design an actual real refrigerator and understand its true efficiencies. And we need the thermodynamics in order to determine how good we can make this thing in the first place and how what we strive for and to make the best uh, vapor compression cycle possible. When I think about another example, it's often very confusing. The way we teach fluid mechanics, thermodynamics, and fluid mechanics, and you're confronted with a real world problem that is almost certainly, almost certain to be a thermal fluids problem. Between my undergraduate degree and my graduate degree, I worked for a while in the automotive industry and I was designing cooling fans for cars. This is one of the fans that I worked on the design for. And coming out of my undergraduate degree, I thought I was having I was doing a fluid dynamics problem. The company, of course, told me that we need to design a fan that would be able to generate an adequate pressure rise and pass an adequate flow rate with that pressure rise. But of course, the real objective of this problem is to keep the temperature of a of a internal combustion engine at the right value. Think about the thermodynamic cycle that is required to extract work from the heat generated from combusting the fuels and what we're really trying to do is maintain the temperature of that engine so that we can optimize that cycle. The, the example of heat transfer through from a car is an incredibly important one and it involves, involves all of the modes of heat transfer that we'll study in this course. The hot fluids in the engine result in conduction heat transfers through the metallic parts of the engine which are then picked up in the flowing coolant going through that engine and carried to the radiator. We have conduction heat transfer in the solid parts of the engine, and now we have convective heat transfer through the cooling flows uh, going through that engine, which are brought to the radiator, where we have a convective flow of air going through the radiator, which is picking up the heat through conduction through the walls of the heat exchanger uh, from that coolant circulating in the engine. 
In addition, one of the biggest loads that we might find ourselves ex experiencing in the car is the thermal load from solar radiation. You've surely all experienced how in a hot day with them when the sun is shining, the car can get extremely hot. Well, this can impose a significant heat load on the engine as well. And so there's radiation incident upon the vehicle that may add to our cooling load, conduction in all of the solid parts, and convection through the f moving fluids that's carrying energy around in there. It embodies all of these interesting modes of heat transfer that we're going to cover in the course. And perhaps if we didn't compartmentalize it in such a way that one person is designing a cooling fan that is trying to give a certain flow rate and pressure rise, another person is designing a heat exchanger uh, in order to affect a certain change in temperature with a certain flow rate going through it, um, and another person is designing a coolant pump in order to circulate the coolant, if we put this all together and realize that the main objective of our problem is to maintain the temperature of an engine, uh, we understand that this is a thermal fluids problem and perhaps we can come up with even more creative ways of solving this problem than compartmentalizing it into the different heat transfer problem, the thermodynamic problem of the engine, and the fluid mechanics problem of the pump, etc. I look forward to working with you in this course. We'll move on to the details.